going to be doing a live. So my name is Lily, and welcome to today's Facebook Live. Uh, today we're going to be talking about veggies, but we aren't talking about all vegetables. Um, but before we dive into today's live, I want to talk to you guys um, uh, and ask you what all of these plants have in common that you see on our beautiful slide here. Um, so go ahead, type it in the comments section, and we will talk about it in just a minute. And I am still dealing with technology a little here, so I am sorry if we have any issues. There we go. having a good day. <laughs> um, we've got some comments maybe. I'll give you guys a couple more seconds to put any comments in. Um, we're just answering the question, what do all of these plants have in common? obvious things that are similar. Uh, I don't think we had anyone comment anything. Okay, so I'll just say some similarities that I found. Um, they are all have green leaves. Um, they are all vegetables. And the most impressive thing though is that all of these plants were bred from the same common ancestors. So I have a technical. There we go. <laughs> um, so Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, collard greens, savoy cabbage, kohlrabi, guy lan, and several other vegetables can all be traced back to Brassica oleracea, which is the plant on the left, which my hand disappears, but it's over there. <laughs> um, and I'll get out of the way so you can actually see my fun little picture. Um, All right. So this map uh, is all of the vegetables that stem from Brassica oleracea. Every line that comes out stands for a vegetable. So you can see there are uh, about eight different groups on this map. And uh, within each vegetable, there are a lot of different types. So for example, these dark green lines over, oh, my hand disappears, but over that way are <laughs> for broccoli, um, and there's about 35 different types in there, uh, which is crazy to think about. But how can this all be possible? How can one plant be the root of so many other plants? Um, and you see like things like broccoli, kale, and cabbage that look totally different. Um, so Basically though, it's all due to evolution through artificial selection. I know these are big words and seems really complicated, but in the next couple slides I'm going to explain everything. Um, and if you have any questions or need clarification while I'm explaining, um, leave a comment or a question in the comment section and I'll be happy to explain what I'm saying in a different way. Okay. So let's start at the very beginning, because it's a very good place to start. As I mentioned, Brassica oleracea is the original plant that all of the other plants on this screen behind me uh, came from. Brassica oleracea uh, is also called wild mustard or wild cabbage. Um, hi, Kathleen. It is the plant in the middle here, so right here. <laughs> 
and you can see it has large green leaves, a green stem, and small little yellow flowers. So farmers have been able to breed certain parts of the plant in order to create new breeds of vegetables. So ancient Greek and Roman civilizations bred that ancestral version of wild cabbage plant for its leaves, which created kale. And eventually they did it and it created cabbage. Um, with further breeding, kohlrabi um, was made in Germany. Uh, cauliflower and broccoli were bred in Italy and Sicily, and then Brussels sprouts were bred in Belgium. But this still doesn't explain how we could go from the wild mustard plant right here to Brussels sprouts, um, which happened to be my favorite vegetable. <laughs> so in order to explain this a little better, I'm going to use a different species that most of us are pretty familiar with. Um, so as most of us, I think, know, dogs were bred from ancient wolves. So this happened between 29,000 and 14,000 years ago, which is a really long time ago. Um, ancient wild wolves would hang out around human areas, eating scraps and easy to find food. Um, and eventually those brave wolves had babies and taught the babies to keep going around eating human garbage. And we don't know exactly how it happened, but eventually humans began living um, with the wild wolves and started breeding the wolves that were friendlier. After decades and centuries of doing this, humans created the domesticated dog. So those dogs were further bred for specific traits. So for example, we have hound dogs, which I won't be able to point to, but are this way. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out this screen. Um, they are, so right next to me on this side is the working, next to that is sporting, and then um, hound dogs is next to that. So in order to get to a hound dog, you're going to take um, dogs that maybe have a really good sense of smell or hearing, and people breed those dogs. So then those dogs have puppies, and those puppies will also have a really good sense of smell or hearing. And um, it's important to understand and see that all of these dogs had a common ancestor. So this common ancestor was a little bit different than the modern day wolf or the modern day dog, uh, which is why when you see this map, you'll see there is the modern wolf uh, right there. Um, as well as a wolf ancestor and modern dogs. Um, and this common ancestor um, is actually kind of the basis of evolution. So let me go next slide. Uh, so this process of breeding for a specific trait is called artificial selection. And humans have done this with many, many, many things. Uh, so some animals are dogs, horses, cows, sheep, goats, pigs, chickens, and turkeys. Um, but humans have also done this with plants like corn, tomatoes, and wild mustard or wild cabbage. So I know it took me a while to really understand what artificial selection is. So I'm going to break it down for you guys again really slow using this picture. Um, I'm going to actually move out of the way so if you won't go this way. Um, so you can see it a little better. And um, artificial selection is also called selective breeding because you're selecting what trait you're breeding for. So say I want a dog that has really long fur. You uh, take some dogs and let them have puppies. <laughs> um, you notice that some of those puppies have really long fur, which is what this is right here. Um, now you let those puppies grow into an adult and once they're adults you let them breed with other dogs that have long fur. Once those dogs have puppies all of their puppies are going to have long fur. So that process from beginning to end is um, artificial selection because you are choosing what you want that dog to look like. Um, using artificial selection or selective breeding, 
Dog breeders have come up with over 360 recognized breeds of dogs, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's a lot of kinds of dogs. <laughs> so going back to our plant, Brassica oleracea, farmers did the exact same thing with it. Um, farmers took that ancient mustard plant and started to breed it and create what they wanted. Um, so, for example, if they wanted a plant that had really large leaves, like kale or collard greens, they would breed that plant to have really large leaves. Then the offspring, or the seeds of the plant um, that they make, so their babies, would also have really large leaves. Farmers would continue to do that until the leaf looks and tastes the way they want it to. So, taking a quick look at the parts of the plant, um, Hi, Teresa Gerhardt. I hope I said that right. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Um, so back to our plant. Farmers, uh, oh, sorry. Taking a quick look at the parts of a plant, you have from the top here, uh, the flower, the leaf, the fruit, if it's a fruiting plant, the stem, and the roots. Um, all the parts of this plant can be bred for. So you can see in this picture now, which I'm going to step out of sight again so you can see a little, um, each of these vegetables were bred from a specific part of that ancient mustard plant. So this is our mustard plant, or our uh, wild cabbage plant. And uh, you can see things like kohlrabi was bred from the stem, this, is this guy, um, kale was bred from the leaves. Cauliflower and broccoli both came from the flower buds. So you can see there are many different parts of the plant that you can breed, and it makes it easy for farmers or breeders to make lots of different varieties. Okay, so as I said before, this is how evolution occurs. So the ancient form of wild mustard um, has evolved by humans using artificial selection in order to create new varieties of plants and vegetables. So, just for fun, I found this picture about Pokemon evolution and wild mustard. Um, it's a little blurry and kind of in the way, so <laughs> I'm going to step out so I can read this to you. Um, on the very top, way up there, uh, it says, uh, Look y'all, Pokemon evolutions are great, but Eevee has nothing on mustard. Um, so for those of you that don't know Pokemon, Eevee is the guy, let me see if I can point over there, I can't, um, but in the middle, over there in the Pokemon, uh, and when you evolve Eevee, she can turn into any of those other Pokemon there, which is kind of like our mustard right here, um, although arguably I think that uh, Brassica oleracea might be a little cooler. So another uh, little meme that I have. Um, because Brassica oleracea is just that cool that it has its own memes. Um, this one is for adults. Uh, you guys can understand maybe a little better. So, Brassica oleracea creating new common names to get one month free trials. I hope I'm not the only one that's done that. <laughs> okay, so getting serious again. Brassica oleracea and all of the vegetables it creates is part of the cruciferous family. So cruciferous was actually our weird word on Wednesday, so some of you might know that these are a type of vegetable. Um, so cruciferous vegetables are super healthy, they have lots of vitamins, and are great for human health. They include vegetables like all the ones listed over there, um, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, brussels sprouts, radishes, collard greens, kale, arugula, watercress, wasabi, rutabaga, and turnips and so many other vegetables too. Um, we actually have some animals here at the OLC that eat lots of cruciferous veggies. Uh, can you guys think of any of these animals? What are some animals here that might eat some cruciferous vegetables? If you can throw your answers in the comment section, go ahead and do it now. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how awesome cruciferous vegetables are. So, Cruciferous vegetables have some extraordinary benefits for our bodies, including killing cancer, reducing inflammation, balancing blood sugar, increasing immunity to diseases, and shrinking tumors. 
It's crazy to think that just eating these veggies will help do all of that. Along with those benefits, cruciferous vegetables also provide humans with much needed vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin B6, folic acid, dietary fiber, and potassium. So these are things that um, all of our, a lot of our animals also need. Um, someone guessed iguana, which is a excellent guess. Um, do we have any other guesses out there? Okay, so iguanas, you are absolutely right with iguanas. Um, our tortoises, bearded dragons, guinea pigs, and iguanas all need cruciferous veggies in their diet. Um, collard greens, which come from Brassica oleracea, are actually a really big part of the iguana um, in our tortoise diets. Mustard greens, radish greens, and broccoli are all also used um, and important in the, our animal diets too. And those all come from Brassica oleracea. Super cool. So, um, there might be some of you out there that really don't like some veggies like broccoli or kale or Brussels sprouts. So, these things are really good for you, so I would recommend trying to eat some of the vegetables, even if you don't like Brussels sprouts. Maybe you can try them in a different way. Um, so, I love Brussels sprouts. <laughs> um, and one of my favorite ways to make them is by cutting them in half, roasting them in the oven with a little bit of salt, and it is so good. And my mouth is kind of watering just standing here talking about it. Um, but any of these veggies up here are going to be really great for your health. Um, so I think that's just about it. I'm going to end this live by saying to make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, if you're watching a replay and have a question, I will answer you back as fast as I can. Um, hi, Joe. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> um, thank you to everyone who has joined me today in learning all about Brassica oleracea, cruciferous veggies, and uh, evolution by artificial selection. So I'm going to see, uh, does anyone have any last minute questions before I close this up for today? I'll wait a couple seconds so you guys can get it in if you have a question. I hope everyone's having a good day today. <sighs> Wait a couple more seconds. Anything? Okay. Okay, so I hope all of you guys have a great weekend and tune in next Friday for our next Facebook Live. Bye!